I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. Thank you for joining me on the Saturday episode. I'm honored that you guys decided to spend your time with me today. So thank you so much. This week, we've been talking about setting a path. A path is a way or track laid down for walking or made by continual treading, the course or direction in which a person or thing is moving. So of course, naturally, I'd been thinking about my podcast this week, and I usually start rolling it around in my head, you know, the week before, like as soon as I finish the last one, I start thinking about the next one. It's really important to me to bring you guys valuable information, you know, thought provoking content. So I have no reason to do a podcast if it's not helping anybody grow. And being a vitality purpose, I want to raise your energy. I want you to feel better when you're done listening. I want you to get great ideas. So I listened to um, Patrick's Ego Maniac Wednesday. And of course, I had no idea what that would bring. If you guys didn't have time to listen, go back and listen to the podcast this week. It's really good. Well, anyways, his podcast got me thinking like on a totally more expansive level of how different our paths really are. I mean, I get it. We all know that we all come from different backgrounds, different places. But when his guest was talking about being 23 years old and his parents telling him, okay, hey, you got to get up this morning and get a job. And Patrick talking about sleeping, you know, while 9-11 was going on and stuff like that. It just brought all of this, you know, stuff back to me about how I was raised. So his friend, uh, Justin, had fully thought that he would just make money being a musician. And it sounded like, you know, when he got around to it, that's what he would do. (laughs) And after listening to the podcast, I have no doubts that he could have succeeded in that if that's what he would have chose. But anyways, the way these guys talked about their growing up, their supportive family, great at sports, like the, the it guys. I mean, it sounds like they were great at everything they did. And I could not relate. I mean, honestly, I couldn't believe my ears. My brain was getting confused. Like I could not fully digest what they were even saying. So I actually went back and listened to the beginning of it for a second time because my ego was wandering off and I wasn't really comprehending what they were saying. So I realized after listening to that, that I've never personally known anyone in my life who was raised in privilege like that. I'm, I can't think of a single soul that I, that I know. I mean, I've seen people on TV and in the movies and stuff, but I've never known anyone that had those kind of problems when they were 23. So it was like, wow, they were 23 years old, realizing that their childhood their childhood was over and that they needed to man up all of a sudden. So Patrick at one point had asked us to just, he said, just stay there for a moment. Remember where you were when you were in that position. Well, he was referring to having graduated college and, you know, being great at everything and not quite knowing what they were going to do now that that rah, rah, rah part of their life was over where they were completely awesome at everything and supportive in everything they did. Guys, I was never in that position. Um, Not even close. I mean, I had a completely different path, which I'm sure many of you did. The moment that he was asking me to hold on to that, you know, moment, that happened to me when I was 17 years old. That's when I had to decide the path that my adult life was going to take. And I had to decide it for myself. I didn't have parents there helping me um, lovingly make adult decisions. And I wasn't even an adult yet. I mean, for crying out loud, I was still a kid. That's when I moved out of my house. My brother had been beating me up so many times and he ended up beating me so bad that I had to go to the hospital. And now the police were there asking me questions. Well, I didn't want my parents to get in any trouble and I didn't want my parents to, or my siblings to get removed from my parents. So I end up in the hospital with stitches in my head, making up gigantic lies about how I had hurt myself. Well, I ended up moving out that day. Like I never went back home. I've never, I just couldn't go back anymore. I mean, I was afraid that it would happen again. I mean, it was getting a lot worse. That was self-preservation. I still remember when I got my first apartment, I was, I wasn't 18 yet. So 
I still remember taking the bus to the place and like doing the math. And I had to. Um, I was born in 1962. And I wanted to say that I was born in 63 because I kept thinking that would make me older. But no, no, no. When you did the math, that would make you younger. So then I'd only be 16 and 17 instead of 17. <laughs> Anyways, it was crazy. That's how young I was. I didn't know how to figure it out. But I got there and everything worked out. And I, I lied and I got my apartment. That was back in the 70s. So things were much easier back then. No credit checks or ID or anything needed. My parents didn't even know that I moved out. They didn't even wonder where I was, I guess, for, I don't know, a while, a week or two. And my mom had known what happened. I mean, she saw the condition I was in because my friend ran to get her while I was laying there on the floor with a towel with blood pouring out of my head. That's the day that they were asking me to remember <laughs> the moment when I had to become an adult. My adult life officially started that day. It was clear to me that no matter what, he did to me that there was nothing that they were going to be able to do to help me. In their defense, my parents really did love me. They just didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to control this kid that needed controlling. Well, he was probably 20 by this time. I somehow understood that. I didn't like it, but I certainly, you know, I guess I could say I got it. I mean, they had to do what they were doing, I guess. They were completely overwhelmed by the situation. And besides, I was better prepared to take care of myself at 17 than my brother was at 20. I mean, I was really mature for my age. Honestly, I'd been preparing this for a, preparing for this day for a really long time. I didn't actually get to be a kid because I was the oldest of seven kids, and so, or the second oldest, so I was always helping my mom. I already knew how to run a household. I had my first paper route when I was 10 years old. I worked at a restaurant on Saturday mornings when I was 12 and 13. And after that, I started getting lots of babysitting jobs. And then I started working at fast food restaurants and an ice cream parlor. I knew how to save money, and I tried not to waste my money. So all that to say, my path was nothing like Patrick and uh, Justin's. I'm assuming that most of the listeners here are going to fall somewhere in between these two extremes. Your upbringing may have been more middle of the road, maybe closer, you know, down at the bottom by lack where I was, or maybe closer up to the top in a life of privilege and anywhere in between and even beyond both of, you know, these two uh, stories that I'm telling. So the point here is we all start at a different spot in the road. We each have our own path. It begins in a place and it ends in a place and it's so individual. And the best news of all, we get to decide what to do with the opportunities that we have in front of us every day. It doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you end up. I mean, isn't that amazing? I love the idea that we have a choice. Every single day, all day long, we get to decide. What will you do with this life that God gave you? And you know, we're all human beings, and we're all tethered to the story of the ego. And we can't help it. We've all been programmed. So you can take these um, two people setting forth on their life, and it doesn't matter what the age is. It could be 16 or it could be 20. I could be 16 years old or you could be deciding, oh, poor me, nothing's ever going to change. I'm just going to stay here and get the crap beat out of me anytime my brother feels like it. Or I could do something about it. And it's the same with Patrick and Justin. You know, Justin's telling his story. He could have just laid on the couch and said, well, what do you guys think I'm going to do? I mean, I want to make music. I want to make music my career. I'm not ready to do that yet. He could have laid there for another year or two and thought about it. How could they do this to me? I mean, it's the same thing. He decided not to become a victim. We both got to choose. I mean, I don't know him at all. And of course, I don't know his family or you know anything about him except what I heard on the podcast. But it sounds like he was in a family that would have been... Um, not in a position to kick him out right then. They would have let him stay there, putting things off for another couple of days, helping him, guide him, nurturing him, and showing him um, how to make his path an adult. It doesn't sound like he had parents that actually would have just thrown him out and said, today's the day. My gosh, I loved how gentle and kind his parents were. Oh my gosh, I wish my parents would have been more like that. But to be honest, you guys, I have to admit, I wish I would have been more like that to my kids. I'm working on it now, finally. Well, I'm over 60 years old now. You guys, if I can get one point across to you today in this podcast, it's this. You're not a victim. 
You can change your life anytime you want. All you have to do is change your mind. You just have to decide. You're not stuck anywhere unless you decide to be. You really are the author of your life and you get to say what the next page says. Who are you? Okay, so I get it because I know when I was younger, I didn't believe that at all. I would have like laughed if I heard that. I, I was stuck. I always felt stuck. But it's really true. If you don't like where you're at, if you're not happy about where this path is leading you that you're on, stop letting it lead you. You're the leader. It's your life. You get to tell the path where to go, but you have to be the one to change it. And if you're not happy, it's on you. It's nobody else's fault. Look at yourself. It's, it's yours. It's your life. And you're the only one who can do anything about it. I still remember being young and wanting a different life so bad. I actually remember asking my mom, like, why are we poor? Why do we have to be poor? And my mom made it really clear, and we tell us about the haves and the have-nots, and, and she let me know, you're one of the have-nots. I didn't know why, but I just didn't want to buy that story. I didn't want to believe it and just take it as the, the end, close the book, that's it. So when I started really wanting a better life, like I could picture a life of abundance and happiness and love and peace and a household that didn't fight, I had no idea how to get it. I didn't have a role model for it. And I knew that they weren't lying to me. I knew that they just really believed it. And I didn't really think that I had to take the same path that they took. I also realized that I disliked the life that I was living so much that I was actually willing to take a chance. You know, Bob Dylan has a song that says, when you ain't got nothing, you got nothing to lose. I could relate to that song so well. I mean, that's how I felt. And that dislike of my life pushed me forward. So I can tell you guys a few things from experience, which might be really helpful to you. If you want to divert the path that you have been able to see, you have to be able to change it by being able to see what you want instead of just what's coming at you. It's like, I guess, offense instead of defense. Now, when I first started to change and live a life that, that I really wanted, I couldn't see a big picture. You know how they say, oh, the big picture, see the big picture, what do you want? I couldn't see a big picture because to be honest with you, the picture that I actually had in my heart was way too big. I couldn't even allow myself to see it. I didn't want to allow myself to dream that big. And I still remember thinking when I was in my 20s and probably my 30s, I don't want to set my expectation of myself too high because I'm going to be so much more disappointed when I fall. I don't want to reach for the stars because climbing up that mountain and then falling back down is really going to hurt. So I remember making a decision to start small. So I'm telling you, if you can't see the big picture, see the small picture. And believe that you can get that goal. Set something attainable for yourself and then go for it one step at a time. And they can be big steps or they can be small steps. It doesn't matter how big the steps are. It doesn't matter how far, or how fast you're moving. It just matters that you go. It just matters that you dare to step out in faith and know that you really can have a better life. So one tiny step on the new path is way better than lollygagging for another two months, two years, or two days down the current path that you're going when that's not where you want to go. Get it? Okay, so set your sight on whatever it is and then make a couple action steps for yourself. Start small if you want to. So when it was um, me trying to take some steps, I had always been really ashamed that I quit high school. Because I was smart and I just made some mistakes and whatever. I just ended up quitting. And I was pretty ashamed of it. I Probably because I'm not really a quitter, like on the inside. And so it like kind of went against my myself, my values. Didn't know anything about values or purpose or anything back then either. But didn't feel good. Never sat well with me. So in order for me to decide I really want to feel better about myself which was one of my goals, I had to go get my GED. So now speaking of not seeing a big picture, what the real big picture is that I wanted to go to college. I remember being a little kid and saying, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be a teacher. And nothing against my parents, but it was a flat no. Like we were not allowed to dream. No, Peggy, stop being such a dreamer. You don't 
have a family that gets to go to college. You're not going to college. Learn to take care of a house, keep good care of yourself, and find a nice husband. So I believed that college was completely out of the question for me. And it looked so appealing to me, being a career woman, being really smart, you know, bringing home the bacon and frying it up in the pan. I wanted to do all that stuff, but it was a flat no, 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 no. But I did get my GED because I figured out how I could do that. So I did. Then I found out about financial aid, but it was much later on. By the time I was in my 40s, I actually did go to college. So I wasn't flying down my new path by any means. <laughs> I didn't just one day see the value in myself and, oh, I'm a wonderful person and I can do anything that I want. But I took small steps to get there. And there's no reason that you can't do that. I promise you, it doesn't matter where you're starting. You just have to go. And you can go at whatever pace you like because this is your life and this is your dream. These are the desires of your heart. And I will tell you for sure that each little step that you take is more valuable than you think. Not only are you getting closer to your goal, getting closer to the person that you really want to be, but you're gaining confidence. And after a little bit of confidence, you'll begin to gain momentum. And momentum is everything. You know, you're on the move, you're rolling, you're shaking. <laughs> it feels really good to be moving forward. Just like learning how to walk. Put one foot in front of the other and pretty soon you gain some confidence, you get more balance, you feel more comfortable with what you're doing, you're outside your comfort zone, you're moving, and next thing you know, you're running. Well, personal development is the same. You just have to start. So I know I say it all the time that Green Focus Power Hour will change your life. So I just want to say it again because I don't think that we always talk enough about each step. Read, journal, affirmations, visualization, meditation, move. So if you're just starting, I could suggest a really good book called Happy Pocket Full of Money or Eckhart Tolle, Finding the Now. So just read 10 minutes, something that will help expand your mind. Next is journaling. I was so uncomfortable journaling that it was hard for me to even get started. So here's how I got started. I wrote down positive affirmations. Page after page of them, I wrote down positive things about myself. This worked really well for me because even more uncomfortable than the journaling was the third exercise in the Green Focus Power Hour, which is affirmations. It's like positive affirmations, what? I was not used to talking positive to myself. I wasn't always putting myself down either, but positive affirmations seemed like some far out, you know, thing. Nothing that I would ever be doing. I mean, isn't this new age or something, Bill? <laughs> Bill started me with, I am whole, perfect, powerful, strong, loving, harmonious, and happy. I am healthy, and I live in peace. I added those two to the end because that's where I was when I started. I was very unhealthy, so I had to counteract that mindset. And I live in peace, I added, because I had zero peace in my life. I was living in strife all day long, every day. Which was finally why I did reach out to him anyways, because I just couldn't take it anymore. Well, I couldn't say I'm whole, perfect, powerful, strong, loving, harmonious, and happy for 10 minutes. So that's why I wrote those pages full of po positive affirmations. And it worked great for me. First, I was just reading them. You know, I had to read out loud for 10 minutes um, affirmations. So that's what I did. But over time, I started feeling them. You guys, I started believing them. And I became them. Now, it's so easy for me to say them. I don't have to write them down anymore. I can just look at myself in the mirror and say, God, I thank you. I'm in the right place at the right time. People love me. I'm a best-selling author. I'm an amazing coach. I'm a wonderful and loving human being. And people love me. I'm a sought-after speaker. I could not have said any of that with a straight face or out loud at all when I first started. I certainly wouldn't have been saying it on a podcast. <laughs> but guys, once you know, you know. You're an amazing human being. Too amazing to stay stuck. So start shouting it from the rooftops. It'll help you. Okay, so next, visualization. I must say, visualization is like an amazing miracle. Remember, what you think you create, what you feel you attract, and what you imagine you become. So in order to visualize your life the way that you want it to be, you have to be able to create it in your mind. 
You have to be able to feel it and you have to use your imagination. And guess what? Visualization really works. Picture it, feel it, get to know yourself living that new life. You guys, it's amazing. I can connect to that girl in my mind, in my heart, and immediately have a gigantic smile on my face. She is so happy and content. You have to smile. And she is me. And I know it's hard to get started. So I would actually admit that if I hadn't been coaching with Bill or with whoever, I may not have ever started doing the visualization and affirmation because it seemed too crazy for me. Like, why would I do that? But I'm asking you to do it. When you're working with a coach in Stress Mastery, you have to check in with us every day. So you let us know that you're done with your Green Focus Power Hour. And yeah, that actually means that you've completed every step of the Green Focus Power Hour. <laughs> and when you invest in a coach, you're making this huge invest investment in yourself. Like you're investing in your life. And if you're like me, you're not going to pay money and then do something half ass you just do it because they tell you to because it's necessary for your growth. So I started realizing how felt how good it felt to be connected, you know, connected for real to the Peggy that I wanted to be. And next thing you know, you're actually connected to your true self and it feels amazing. It's incredible. It's like the best feeling ever. Joy, peace and fulfillment. It's right there. It's it's right there for you. Okay, so next is meditation. Meditation basically trains your brain to notice the ego, to be able to switch back from the red zone to green zone immediately. And it really does work. So now you can live your life as your true self connected to your heart instead of as your ego self. And boy, when you can do that, the faster you catch it, the better life is. It's so much easier to stay on the path that you set for yourself instead of the path that you've been on you know, that path that you didn't set, the one that twists and turns and th throws you in mud anytime, the one that keeps you activated all day, the one that's full of potholes and, and landmines that you step in all day long. You know that one. <laughs> we like to stay away from that. Okay, so after meditation is movement. So at first I started doing this in the winter and I was in Arizona so I could just go for a walk outside. Now I go to the gym. But it doesn't matter what you do. Like I remember um, Bill telling me, you can just walk in place if you want to. You can uh, do some sit-ups or jumping jacks. It doesn't matter what you do. You just move for 10 minutes. And all of this stuff works so well. So you can read whatever book you want. You can journal whatever you want. Your affirmations can be anything that you choose as long as they're positive. Um, like I said, for me, Bill started me with I am whole, perfect, powerful and strong, loving, harmonious and happy. So now I ch had to change my mantra because I used to say I am healthy and I live in peace, which of course I still want peace and health. But I'm not at a very unhealthy and a zero peace in my life anymore. So now I have other things. So this can change. This, this moves with you. So I was really thankful that I finally reached out to Bill because I was so tired of my life. I honestly couldn't take it anymore. I really wanted to change. Finally, finally, finally. Remember the definition of path? A way or track laid down for walking or made by continual tread or the course or direction which a person or thing is moving. Well, let me tell you, I was sick and tired of the rut that I had made by myself for continual tre uh, by continually treading the same path. I was on a path that I had not laid out for myself. I mean, yeah, in some ways, I was living, you know, making my own goals and plans and, and living my dream, but mainly all by my program. So I was constantly living in fight and force and stress. And as we all know, the programs that we have are stories. And there are just all of this stuff that we carry with us through life, programs that we don't need. What we're taught by other people about who we are, how we should behave, and, you know, who we should be and what we should do. Well, I wanted to change the course of my life. And this wasn't a change for my career, finance, or even my personal development the change that I was looking for was going to come from my relationships and my health. 
and I never knew that there were even five life categories. I never considered how hard change in the direction would actually be. I was in my late 50s, so I'd been living the same way for a really long time before I even heard of stress mastery. So I literally had decades of living in these programs, deep-seated programs. I had no idea about the ego until the day I named Lucy, and that day I started seeing her. So I had zero understanding that I'm not my ego. I had no idea that I would have to get to know myself so well that I would separate the eyes and get to know who's Peggy and who is this imposter. I had to get to know myself enough to understand what the heck that I've been doing for all those years. I had to understand myself well enough to forgive myself, to let me start being me, to let go of regret and stop letting fear run my life. And you guys, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. And if you... uh don't decide what your future looks like, then I can tell you that your future is going to look just like your past. So there's so much more to stress mastery. I mean, we didn't even talk about the seven steps of stress mastery. You can go in the community anytime and check that out. There's so much information in there. But I just wanted to ask you today, if you haven't started setting your own path, start your course today. What you can do today is prepare for tomorrow morning, Green Folks Power Hour. Go get yourself a good book. A notebook that's just for this one thing, and that's all that you need to start Green Focus Power Hour. Actually, you don't even have to have the book because you can do it on an audiobook if you want. But hand write out your journal. Do it any way you want, but just please start 10 minutes each thing. To change your path, to change your direction, you're going to have to decide where you're going. So think about it today. Who are you going to be when you get there? I mean, isn't it fun and exciting? Life can be whatever you want it to be. Start big or start small, but just get started. If you need any help, we're here for you. You can contact Bill, David, me, any of the other coaches in the Stress Mastery community. They're great. And of course, you can find me at PeggyRomero.com. I would love to hear from you. Guys, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you again for listening. And remember, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on the mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.